So, Mr. Adeko, yeah. Good afternoon, everyone. I think I placed everybody on mode so that there will be little interference. So uh, we can as well make use of the chat window. Anyway, there is a chat conversation window there. So in case we need to just say one or two things, we can just look at um, right in front of us. We have where you have your camera, turn off camera, you have your moods, then you have chats there. So we can just drop something in the chat box in the chat box there so that in case we need to say something because if everybody is trying to say one or two things at the same time we won't be able to enjoy ourselves so that's the reason why i had to place everybody on mood so that i'll uh, be able to enjoy ourselves i just need you to probably just drop one or two things here to show that you can hear me Stop if I, you can mute yourself, please. Or I'll do it uh, anyway. So you can just drop a it's message in the chat box and say, I can hear you before moving on. Please, let's make use of that chat window. It's very close to our hang up um, icon on our screen. Okay, that's cool. Somebody has. All right, then. Okay, so good afternoon once again. Um, what we want to do today is to take a closer look at Microsoft PowerPoint, and now we can use it to create content, creative content. I know I know a lot of people that are online at the moment. Some of them are people that I consider to even be my guest self. So, but today what we want to do is to learn from one another. I usually say this, that there is no... Um, stage on the stage we are all together in it and i'm always looking forward to learning from people and i believe we can all learn from one another because i believe in the saying that if you want to go fast you go alone if you want to go far you go together with somebody in case you're trying to draw back the person can always pick you up and say no you're not drawing back let's keep going so that's the essence of this and i want to give kudos to um so call me a play a lot of people usually say he looks so much like me he's my younger brother anyway i'm still his bigger brother so i love the fact that he set up something like this so that we can always work together and fill in the gap so that we can step in the gap nobody will come into nigeria to change the status quo we need ourselves to be able to like do something in our own little way so without much ado i'll share my screen so that you'll be able to see my screen and see what I'll be doing. So today, like I said, we want to look at Microsoft PowerPoint. We want to look at the new features in Microsoft PowerPoint. And at the same time, I want us to get ourselves familiar with Microsoft Online, Office Online. I know we're familiar with Microsoft Office Suite. If you have your laptop with you, I know one of the first set of applications to install on your system is the Microsoft Office Suite. And if you're talking about Microsoft Office Suite, then we're talking about um, Microsoft Word, Microsoft Excel, Microsoft um, PowerPoint, and all other apps. So when you go to your Microsoft Office, uh, your start button, you see all the Microsoft uh, apps there. So we have all these apps on our system. And we want to look at just one of them. They are like a family. So we want to look at one of them, which is Microsoft PowerPoint. So I will start from this offline Microsoft PowerPoint before moving to the online Microsoft PowerPoint. This is my own PowerPoint. I know we know how to launch PowerPoint. So let me just pretend as if I'm creating a new so that you won't say I already have something on my own screen. So this is my PowerPoint window. Don't get it twisted. We have different versions of Microsoft Office. So the one I'm using at the moment is Microsoft Office 365. That is the reason why probably my own um, ribbon here and features here is different from yours. But that's not where we're going. Forget about all these efficiencies here. You can still make use of that particular Microsoft Office PowerPoint that you have on your system. So this is our Microsoft PowerPoint. I want to believe we all know how to get to this PowerPoint environment. I have a tendency to speak very, very fast. I speak very, very fast. If I'm going too fast, please just try and slow me down by um, 
dropping something in the chat box. I'll be going back and forth to check the chat box to be sure that uh, I'm not speaking too fast. So I was still good. Uh, am I not speaking too fast so that I can uh, take it slow? But I will take my time to explain and see if we are seeing Microsoft PowerPoint for the first time. I will try as much as possible to ensure that I go back intermittently to ensure that yes we are together so like i said this is our powerpoint this is my powerpoint many a times we get to use some of the regular features like we want to insert uh, new slides we want to type you want to click you want to do all this but let me backtrack a little bit and pretend as if we've not been using microsoft powerpoint so what is Microsoft PowerPoint? This is our Microsoft PowerPoint. We use Microsoft PowerPoint for presentation. We regard Microsoft PowerPoint as a presentation tool, or some we say of multimedia uh, application. We have others, not only Microsoft PowerPoint. That is Prezi, that is Open Office, um, Slide, that is Google. A whole lot of company or a whole lot of help are out there. But today we are making use of PowerPoint. And here, these are all, these are the ribbons from your home to your insert, to your draw, to your design, to your transition. Maybe I should ask, can you see my screen? Can you see my screen? Yes. You can see my screen, that's good. Okay, so I have my home tab here. I have my insert tab, draw, design. Yeah. Transition, animation, slideshow, review, view, and all of that. It's possible you are not even seeing this. So, meaning that we have different tools under each of the tabs. At the moment, I'm at home, and here I have different groups. We call these groups the clipboard, the slides, the font, the paragraph, the drawing, the voice, the new group. We call all these groups. Meaning I can as well create another group myself and had some features there. Maybe I love to use certain features that are not here at the moment because we have hundreds of features that are not even here at the moment. Tens, maybe I shouldn't say hundred, tens of features that are not here at the moment that we can still have there. So it's possible that on your own PowerPoint, you are not even seeing some features yet but the features are still hidden in PowerPoint. So you can as well still add other features there. We'll get to that in a bit. So this is uh, what you see when you launch your Microsoft PowerPoint. And PowerPoint, unlike Microsoft Word, we deal with slides. So at the moment, it's saying I have just one slide. That's why I have one written beside uh, this for now. I have one slide. If I want to add more, I'll go to new and click on another slide. After clicking on new slide, you'd notice I have different teams here, different slide layouts here. I have my title slide, I have my title and content, I have my section header, I have my two content comparison, blank content with caption, picture with caption. I've got all these layouts here, meaning it depends on what I want to put in my in my slide. I can as well choose a particular layout depending on the content. So let's say my second slide, I want this. I'll just click on it. So that's that easy to add slides to our PowerPoint. That's how to add slides to our PowerPoint. Maybe after choosing a particular layout, I feel I need to change that layout. I don't want that layout. So I can still come here and change the layout to suit the purpose. So you notice I've changed my layout now. So we can as well change our layout and add more slide to our slide. So that's how to add slide. That's how to change layouts. Remember I said, I just want to take it from the known to the unknown. So we've changed our slide. I want to change my layout. I come here, I change my layout. I want to create a presentation on 5G, for example, 5G technology. I'll type the title there. I want the subtitle. Maybe I want to put um, conspiracy. I want to put conspiracy theories. Maybe that's my subtitle. So with this, I can say I'm done. 
with the first slide. Because we were talking about PowerPoint, we were talking about points. Microsoft Word. If you have to be Microsoft Word, that means I want to type document. I want to type document if I'm using Microsoft Word. This is a Microsoft Word environment. I want to type and continue to type and continue to type. So I work with pages there. But in PowerPoint, we work with points. So you don't want to populate your slide with too much text. Just little text, more graphics to support your point. That is the essence of PowerPoint. I want to teach a topic. I want to get enough pictures. I want to get enough videos or simulations so that to have an enhanced teaching and learning session. So that's just how to add content to our PowerPoint. For example, as it is now, I'm done with my first slide. So I can move to my second slide and say, maybe I want to define 5G technology and just write about 5G technology here and that's all. So I can still leave my second slide, move to my third slide and do, maybe I want to compare, uh, I want to compare uh, 4G with 5G. What am I going to get from if, uh, what's the difference between 4G and here I have 5G. So I want to now write out the features here. So I have different layouts that I can work with. That's about inserting slides and changing layouts. So if you move to the other group here, the fonts group, I know we're familiar with all this. We want to change our font style. We want to change our font size. You want to bold, you want to italize, you want to underline, you want to um, um, present gross now or put shadow to your text. You want to change your case from lower case to upper case. You want to toggle the case. You want to um, highlight the text. You want to change the color of your text. You do this here. So on the paragraph, you want to change, you want to use bullets, different types of bullets are available there. You want to use numbers, you want to deal with your alignments, align left, right, and center. Here on the paragraph, there is a particular feature that I love a lot, which is smart art. We'll get to smart art later. I'm just trying to take us through what we have on our screen. So here too, we've got shapes that we can insert all these shapes. I know we're familiar with all these. They are available also in Word and other maybe some other Microsoft tools. So you have all this here. We'll get to these other parts. So if I move to another tab, which is my insert tab now, then I want to, let me quickly check in case we've got um, comments here. Okay, we can go on. So I've left home. Now I'm at the insert tab. In the insert tab, I have insert table, meaning I can insert table in my PowerPoint. Maybe I've got data that I want to work with in my PowerPoint. I want to share data with my audience. I can insert um, table in PowerPoint. Say it's that simple. Or I can just come to draw table, then type um, the number of rows or number of columns. So I can as well just do that here. It's that simple. So here also I can insert pictures, meaning I've already downloaded the pictures. I have the pictures on my system. So I can just go to pictures and locate my picture here and insert picture. That's how to insert picture. But these days I rarely insert pictures from my system. If I want to make it of online pictures, I prefer to just get it directly from PowerPoint rather than go to Google, download it from there, then insert it there. So we have, we can insert pictures directly from online pictures. I'll tell you the advantage of that. If I use my online pictures here, meaning I want to search online for a particular picture to support my presentation. So I'll just click on um, online pictures and it will open up this window for me to search. Ow. I need to move somebody. Okay. Let's see. Hello. Hello, we're with you. So I'll just move to you. We're glad to have you join us. Okay. 
So don't forget the session is being recorded. So I'll share the video on WhatsApp when we're done so that we can play catch up with the video. So here we want to insert our pictures from the internet. So I can just come here and say, okay, I'm looking for something on 5G. Maybe I need pictures on 5G. So I'll just type it there. And here it's showing me something. It's showing me creative commons only. What does that mean? I need somebody to just type that in the chat box. What does that mean? Creative commons only. What does that mean? Creative commons only. So I've tried to search for 5G using the online pictures feature in my PowerPoint. And it's showing me this list of pictures here. And it's saying creative commons only. I need somebody to just type in the chat box what that means. Creative commons. What that means. Creative commons. Yes, it's saying Creative Commons only. What does that mean? Let's talk about if I, you're re echoing the same thing. What does that mean? Creative Commons only. What does that mean? We should answer the question, right? Yes. What does that mean? Creative Commons only. You can just type there instead of talking. Oh, you can speak anyway. Creative Commons only. What does that mean? If you classify pictures or content as creative commons only, what does that mean? Anybody? Okay, maybe we still want to type. Okay, I saw something. Images of similar pictures. Um, it means the commonly used pictures, the modern pictures. Um, um, not there yet. Maybe what, what I will have us to do is, even after this training, we can just look at creative common, what it means. Okay, these are pictures, right, that oh, we can use these pictures for our presentations, meaning nobody will sue us for using all these pictures in our presentation. Nobody will sue you for using these pictures, meaning the pictures are how they, with they, uh, name, name of the owner of the pictures. So if I click on this picture, for example, and I click on insert, it will insert that picture and it will also add like a uh, text acknowledging that this picture was taken from so, 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 so site. So uh, you don't need to be afraid that uh, somebody can sue me for using the picture. So let me let me try and reduce the picture so that you see what I'm saying. Okay, so let's look here. This is saying this photo by a known author is licensed under Creative Commons, meaning we can use this picture without um, being afraid of getting sued by a particular organization or by a particular person. Because many a times we get pictures from the internet and we just use it to support our presentation or we use it without even. Um, checking whether it's, there is a copyright somewhere. So we need to take that into consideration if we want to be creating content that we want to be widely acceptable out there. And so that somebody somewhere will not say, yeah, that's my picture. And this man did not even um, cite or did not even give me acknowledgement. So what this has helped us to do is to see and say, let me show you creative common pictures first. Let me show you Creative Common pictures first. But if I don't want pictures from Creative Common, I want pictures from everywhere, then I want to check the Creative Common only. Then it will bring out more pictures from different sources, whether there's a copyright on it or not. So that's another way of inserting pictures into your presentation using online pictures. And on the online pictures, we have screenshots meaning I want to teach you now how to use PowerPoint. I can as well take a screenshot of my screen. I can take a screenshot of my screen. Maybe I want to show you all that I'm talking about. Maybe you don't have PowerPoint on your system at the moment, and I need to show you the features, and I need to show you all these tabs, so I can as well take a screenshot of my screen. This is a screen clipping here. I can click and then decide to draw out the parts. 
as I am trying to do a screenshot of this now, so I can do a screenshot. Somebody is saying, um, he, Mr. Sunde, can you hear me now, please? Hello, can you hear me? Yes, yes, yes. Okay, somebody is saying through here. All right, so that's how to do screenshot. So let's move on. Still under inserts. Here we have shapes, we have icons. I'm not sure you have icons on your own Microsoft PowerPoint, so I, I, I won't dwell more on that. But if you have icons on your own, meaning you can as well use icons like uh, all these social media icons. You want to use icons for accessibility. You want to use icons for arrows. You want to use icons for body parts. Maybe you want to make reference to all this as a biology teacher. You want to... Uh, explain kidney or you want to explain all these things you've got icons here too that one can use in uh, the course of designing a presentation maybe let's go to education for example you've got pencil you've got scissors you've got all these in fact you have uh, emotions too that you can use you've got food and drinks all these are available on that icon in microsoft powerpoint okay so also you have 3D models that you can insert into your PowerPoint. You won't be able to insert the 3D models if you are not online, except if you've created one yourself. So you can as well go to online. So you already have tens of 3D models online that you can insert in your PowerPoint presentation. I'm trying to show us some features that ordinarily we don't get to use them every day. So. Maybe as a math teacher, you need 3D math symbol. I need to move somebody. You need to use 3D math symbols so you can. OK. So you want to use all these 3D symbols so you can just come here and click on a symbol and say, you want to use it to explain something in your presentation. So it's not only for mathematics, it's for um, anything at all you want. As a chemistry teacher, I want to teach bonding, chemical bonding, and I want something like a 3D that I want to insert in my presentation. I can just use my 3D models and look at what I've inserted. Look at this, look at this. So I can as well use this to explain something to my student. You know, if it were to be ordinary picture, let me re remove all this. If it were to be ordinary picture, you won't be able to turn it around and flip it here and there. But because we, we've inserted a 3D picture now, a 3D model, I can spin it around and show people. OK, so this is what I'm talking about. So you can insert 3D models too in PowerPoint. And you can as well insert, insert smart hats. I said I'll get back to smart hat later. Smart hat is one of the coolest tools in PowerPoint. I love using smart hat a lot. OK, so here, yeah, yeah, here, yes, nothing too serious here. Yeah. OK, let's get to media. I know some of us have been recording videos. Um, thanks to somebody like uh, Mr. Ganiu, as um, is. He has uh, trained us on how to use Camstasia and some other tools out there. There are several tools out there, and we don't need to say we want to learn how to use all. We can just pitch our tent with a particular one we are com we're comfortable with. So with PowerPoint also, you can do what we call screen recording. You can do screen recording. So if you go to insert on your own system, locate media, and under media, you should have video, audio, and screen recording. Hold on. In case you do not have screen recording in your own PowerPoint, it means that you still need to do what? To add it to your PowerPoint. So how do I add the feature to my PowerPoint? You can go to File. From File, you can go to Option. You can go to your Options. From File to Options, then you can um, customize your ribbon. Then I'll choose all commands. I want to see everything. I'll check out all commands. Then I'll scroll down to where I have my screen recording. So in case yours is not on your PowerPoint, that's why I'm showing you this. So then you locate screen recording. Okay, 
So this is screen recording. So you can now add it to a particular um, tab. So I still want it. Assuming it's not in my insert tab now, then I'll just click on um, my inserts. Then I'll say add. You say you say I need to create a group for that. I already have it. But in case you don't have it, you can just come in and add your screen recording to your tab so that you have your screen recording here. And what that does is that it helps you to speak over your presentation and record what you're doing so that when you now share it with people how they you are speaking through your presentation, you can be checking your presentation slide by slide and you'll be explaining what you already have on your presentation so that, that that's kind of better than just um using maybe like a whiteboard or you have somebody hold on to a camera and record you so the first thing you can do is create your powerpoint once you're done with your powerpoint then you can now come to your media here and do what we call screen recording so i've clicked on screen recording there it's asking me the area to record and i'm saying it should record everything then i'll now choose record so I've clicked on record, it's counting down. Okay, so as it is now, I am recording my screen. So I can go back to my PowerPoint. Let's assume this is a presentation that I've created in PowerPoint. I can as well start talking about this slide one after the other. And as I'm speaking now, it is recording my voice and at the same time capturing my screen. In fact, you can as well put it on um, your slideshow. It's, it will still record it. So you're record, you're showing the slideshow and you're talking. I'm saying, welcome to PowerPoint. I want to show you five tips for simpler way to work. Oh, here you have my designer. Here you have these, look at these pictures here and there. So I'm doing this maybe like a biology or physics teacher here and already have pictures, I already have content in my slide. So as I'm talking now, I am recording my video. So when I'm done, I will just say stop. I'll just say stop. And that video, I have it here now. So this is what I've recorded now. So I can now say I want to share this video with my colleagues on probably the WhatsApp group, or I want to put it on, on, or I want to put it on uh, YouTube. So here I can now say, okay, this is my video. I want to play it to see. So that, that is how you, the video will come out. Then you can now say, yes, I want to save that video outside PowerPoint. I want to save that video or I want to trim the video. I want to do anything else with the video. So I can now say save media, meaning I want to share my video with people. I'll just click on save media. I can change the name, then I can save it wherever I want it to be. Let's say I want to put it on my desktop now and I'll save it on my desktop. So it's no more inside my PowerPoint now. It has been saved as a separate video. So if I so if I now go to my home page, for example, let's say I go to my, my desktop and locate the video that I've just saved now, MP41. Yes, this is it. So this is what people will see when you share your video out there. Okay, so that, that's how the whole thing will come out eventually when you're done using screen recording. So that's how to use screen recording. That will come in handy, especially to us as teachers. Maybe we want to um, speak to our presentation and record it and share it on social media so that our students out there, thousands or millions of students out there, can lay their hands on our video and enjoy our presentation. Take, for example, let me just bring up one of one presentation here. Um, and just say, okay, um, 
and bring out a presentation here. I've got a lot of presentations here. Let me just bring up one here. So maybe as a teacher, I have this, for example, and I want to teach this. I will have prepared this for my student using PowerPoint. So it makes it look um, more appealing to the eyes and students love graphics. They love audiovisual. They want to see things. And it will even help us to even um, do more when we are trying to record our video. So you can as well just create your slide. Then you now come to where you have your screen recording, record the screen and speak over it. So that's regards screen recording. So if you go to draw, draw, on that draw, you see tools like pen that will allow you ink. So even when you're recording your screen, you can as well ink and still say, yes, I want to make reference to this particular thing. Look at what I'm doing now. I want to make reference to a particular thing that I've typed. Maybe as I'm recording, I want to tell the student, okay, look at, look here, this is this or this is that. I can still ink and screen recording will still capture all this so that our presentation will look um, more professional and all that. So that's on draw. On design, we know design. You want to add flavor to our presentation. You want to add Maggie. I know what have you to our presentation. We have a lot of teams. In fact, more than all the teams you have here, you can even download some online and all that. So that's regard teams. But there is something here that I will still talk about when we move online. This is design ideas. You will not have design ideas on your own PowerPoint, except if you are using Office 365 or you're using Microsoft PowerPoint online, which I want to believe you all have access to because you only need Microsoft email accounts to have access to PowerPoint online. Design ideas is one of the new features in PowerPoint. Meaning, I don't want to spend more time thinking of how to arrange my slide, how to blend in my pictures with what have you. Because if I just choose uh, design ideas, it will help me out with that. I will talk about that when we move online. Transition, we know about all these. We want to make sure that our slides come in in the order we want or maybe we want a particular transition how the slides will move from one will transit from one slide to another that is slide transition then there is animation which will affect the objects in your slide for example this is one object these are another objects these are another objects meaning i want to use animation i want my text to jump in or 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 do something i can use all this so on the slide on slideshow you want to show what you've designed you can use slideshow from beginning from current and what have you so that's just briefly to show us that we've got a lot of tools under each of the tabs a lot of tools under each of the tab i want to Okay, there is view too. I haven't touched view. There is view too. Another view, we have what we call slide master. We have what we call slide master. Many a times we don't get to use slide master, but to save ourselves a lot of time, we need slide master. Meaning we can easily customize how the entire presentation will look like, starting from the color, starting from the font, starting from the background and all that you want to customize that all my text in this presentation the entire presentation whether 100 or 200 slides you want all the slides to have font 20 and you want all titles to have font 50 you can decide all that in slide master if i click on slide master now it's showing me click to edit slide master you go up to the first slide in slide master so you go to the first slide in slide master so that is where you customize your entire slide so once you're done with this maybe you want to add the logo here you want to type something here you want to decide on the font color you want to decide on the font style you can do all 
in Slide Master. And when you're done, you close your slide. So everything you do in Slide Master will now affect your slides. Even the new slide that you've not even had it. So we can take time to explore uh, what we have in Slide Master too. So these are few features. So I want to encourage us to just, after the training, go back to your PowerPoint, click on each of the tabs and check out all the features, one after the other, and just check. On my own screen, I still have dictates here, which is a new feature to PowerPoint, meaning as I'm talking, I can tell PowerPoint to start converting it to another language, and it will be showing there. So I can as well do that in my PowerPoint here. I think somebody left a message. Sorry, I need to. Yes, that's what I said. Most of the things that I've talked about, you can use it your, using your regular PowerPoint. At least this uh, screen recording is your regular PowerPoint. The few things that you won't do on your regular PowerPoint are just the icon and probably the 3D models for now, and then the design ideas. But we're moving online now so that you see that even if you are not using Office 365, you can still use some of these tools when you are on the internet. So how do I get to my, my um, PowerPoint online? If you have Outmail, if you have Outlook accounts, you can access your PowerPoint Excel Word online. Even if you don't have it installed on your system at all, you can still use Excel on your system as if you have it installed. Even if it's a brand new system with no office on it at all, you can still use it. All you need to do is to sign into your account the way I've signed it into mine. Then go to your app launcher here, click on it, and then you see all apps available for use, starting from the Outlook, which is the mailing app, to your Word, to PowerPoint, to OneDrive, to Excel, to OneNote, to Calendar. So what we're talking about today is not OneDrive or Excel, it's PowerPoint. So I'll just click on PowerPoint. Then it will open up PowerPoint for me as if I am launching my PowerPoint on my computer system. So look at it, it has opened up my PowerPoint and it's saying blank, I'll choose blank to pretend as if I just want to start afresh. So anybody with any Microsoft account can do this so that you have access to especially design ideas because design ideas will save you a lot of time, a lot of stress designing your slide. So look at it now. I have said pretty same thing with my PowerPoints. So I have my own, my inserts, my design, my transition animations, review view. I have all this here. And to my right hand here, I have designer. That is the work of the design idea. So even here, if I just type, let's say I just type um, a title, I just type here plane, for example, here plane, nothing. I only type here plane. Design idea will look for design, will look for pictures that I can use to support my presentation. I won't even need to be the one to arrange it. Look at what I have here. It's already showing me, do I want this particular design? So it's already showing me different kind of themes that are not even available when you're using your regular PowerPoint. So with my design here, I only have access to these common uh, designs. But with my online, it will bring up suggestions for me. And if I want any of this, I'll just click on it. Look at it. I've clicked on that. So it will just apply it to my slide and make it look more professional, more beautiful. Look at what has happened. So even if I insert a picture now, it will blend in the picture with the design itself. So I won't be the one to say, I want to push my picture here. I want to push my picture somewhere. I still want to use my online picture. So it will be the one to do the 
designed for me. So I won't look at, I only inserted my picture here, but look at what is already show, suggesting for me here. So in case I want to use any of this design, I can just choose this. So I've selected that. Even if I don't know how to send my pictures to the background, it has helped me to do that. Look at what has happened. It has sent the picture to the background to ensure that it looks more professional. So you can as well just check if it's something you want, or uh, if you want a particular design, you choose that. If you want or don't want that particular design, you can even close it and tell it to suggest for you again and come up with something different. So you can continue to change that until you see something you like and you can as well ignore it and do your own thing yourself and do your own thing yourself. So designer will help with the arrangement of your uh, your slide. So if I had another slide now and say I want to list out um, mm, types of airplanes, if there's anything like that. So it will still suggest for me here. So if I list out, let's say I just list out all this. It will still suggest for me here. It's still suggesting. OK, so look at what I'm saying here. So it's already suggesting for me if I want my types to appear like this. So I'll just click on it and that's all. So this will save us a lot of time. And at the same time, it will help us to create uh, nice looking presentations that we can now do a screen recording over and then share on our social media platform or on YouTube so that students can now make sense of it and still learn using our slide. Another thing that you have access to online that you won't get offline if you're using your regular PowerPoint is this morph. This morph is a new transition addition. You won't have it in your home PowerPoint offline, but if you want to make use of it, you can use it online. Morph will make you transit from one slide to another and still make it look as if um, it's better I just show you. It's better I just show you how that works. So let's say I want to insert um, this picture. I'll just, just something. I'll just insert this picture from online. Um, okay, let me just pick anything here. Okay, I want to start from this picture and I want it to end here. So I'll insert this picture here. Okay, so this is an apple. I will duplicate this slide, this particular side. I want to duplicate the side. Then I want the slide to move from one to the other. So I'll duplicate the side. And here I want to change the picture here. I want the picture to change, probably change to something else. Or or maybe I want the picture to move here. Let's do that. I want the picture to move here. So here I'll come here in my transition. I'll do morph. I want morph. So if I do my view, my view from that particular slide where we have our apple. Let's go to where we have our apple, not here. OK, so I want to move to the next slide now. Let's watch what we have and look at it. It has changed slide, but it's appearing as if uh, my apple is moving from one hand to the other. I did not say anything. I did not touch anything. What I did was just to duplicate my apple. This is the first slide, and this is the second slide. I moved my apple somewhere else. Let's say I want my apple to even come here now. Then I'll just come here and do morph then i'll come here also and do morph meaning i want my apple to move from one place to the other so let's from current slide now so we'll waste that time 
Okay, so I want to move to the next slide now. So it's appearing as if my apple is actually moving on my screen, but my apple is not moving. I only made use of my morph. So all these will make your presentation look really, really to take, for example, as a chemistry teacher, I'm, I'm teaching chemical reaction and I want uh, maybe a five cents. I want smoke to move from one place to the other on my screen, or maybe I want to show when one animal is giving birth and from the starting point to the uh, finish point. So we can as well make use of morph. You won't see morph in the regular PowerPoint, except if you are using Office 365 or you're using maybe 2019 Microsoft Office. But online, we all have access to the online. So far, you are using, you have your Outlook accounts, your Microsoft account. So these are few, these are two things that uh, we can enjoy when we use our PowerPoint online. These days, I rarely use um, the regular PowerPoint to create my presentation because I want to have access to new designs. I don't want people to see my design and say, oh, I know that particular team. It's the regular team in Microsoft PowerPoint. I want new things and I want my slides to be well, the pictures to be well arranged and all that so that it will look really okay. For example, look at this. If I'm changing to the suggestion here, it's already showing me the helpful in this form. So with your design ideas, which is your designer here, you can as well do more with PowerPoint. Also with your uh, under transition with Morph, you can do more. Let me go back to the regular PowerPoint. So this is a regular PowerPoint. Notice I have my own design ideas there. It's because I'm using my Office 365 accounts. So that's why it's uh, it's showing me design ideas there. So let's get back here. Um, maybe if there's any other feature that I feel that you feel we should talk about here, um, you can please just drop that in the chat box. Maybe if there's any question or is there anything you want us to dwell more on that I've not actually touched, you can please just drop the question or just unmute yourself and, and speak freely, please. Before we move on. Hello? Hello? Anybody? Hello? Hello, okay, okay, okay. All right, you can speak freely, sir. Okay, I will address the question. Somebody is asking a question here that, uh, how do I move from one slide to the other? I will address that. And somebody has asked, if my school don't have Microsoft Office 365, and as a teacher, how do I have access to it? Okay, maybe let me start from the first one. Somebody asked, how do we move from one slide to the other? I can just click. At the moment, I'm in slide one. I want to move to slide two. I'll click on slide two. I want to move to slide three. I'll click on slide three. So I can just click to move, and I can also make use of my arrow keys on my keyboard. I can make use of my arrow keys on my keyboard. Okay. Somebody wants to speak. Uh, if you have, you know, you need Office 365 account. How do you do that? Um, yes, you can pay for your own Office 365 account, but it's kind of expensive because it's around eight dollars fifty cents per month. But the good thing is that a school can have access to it for free. A school can have access to it for free. That that's it. And Mr. Dewale Kayode, I know you have Office 365 accounts now. You have your own Office 365 account. So, but like I said, you don't even need to have it before you can use Designer or you can use um, um, Morph. So far, you have. So far, you have uh, your Office account, which you can create freely you can just use the microsoft powerpoint online so that you can enjoy you can enjoy that so i have a question any question all right sir 
what is just really is not like a question. What I want to ask is that for those that have the those that have already got the Microsoft 365, so 365, yeah, 365. I don't know how they can share it with us by putting it in their drive, whether we too can have access to it because. Some of us are living in an area where the network is a serious challenge to them. Even though if they cannot use the online, they can still be able to use the offline to do what they want to do. That is just what I want to say. Okay, you know, um, even without the online, I decided to just have the online to it. Even without the online, we can still do all most of the things that we've mentioned, except for the designer and morph. We can still screen record. We can still import pictures. We can still do all that. We can still go on with our recordings. But with our Office 365 account, I there is no way somebody will want to share with you because it's tied to your email address. The Office 365 is tied to your account details, your email, not bank, anyway, your email address. Take, for example, a school. Let's say... um. Um, I'll be grammar school now. The email address for that teacher will probably be Ugusoya Isiaka at Abekuta Grammar School.com. So it's tied to the person's email. And once you sign in using your Office 365, then you'll be able to have access to all the features. So it's not as if um, somebody can easily say and willingly say, want to share it with you, except if your school is now. Um, is getting onboarded and your school is now trying to deploy the Office 365. But really, it's not about Office 365. It's about doing more with even the normal PowerPoint that we have. So even with the regular PowerPoint that we have, you can still screen record, you can still do all that. But if you want to use your designer and morph, even without Office 365, just use your regular Microsoft account online, then you'll still be able to do that. I doubt if somebody who wants to just share his or her own um, Office 365 account with you so that you can um, probably download it on your system and use it offline. Does no that problem. answer your question, sir? No, you have answered. Thank you very much. Yes. yes. Um, I saw another question here. How do I? Is the recorded PowerPoint captured? Yes, it did. It captured the audio. It captured the audio. So once you do your screen record, it will capture both the audio and uh, the video. It will capture everything. So screen record under insert media, then screen record. It will capture the audio as well as your screen so that you can now share that with your students. Your students will not only see what you're talking about, but at the same time, hear you speak about what they are seeing at that moment in time. So instead of spending more time using our mobile phone to record ourselves, and you know, when you record yourself using your mobile phone, you we use different types of mobile phone. Some will record 10 minutes and you check the size, it will be like 200 megabytes. And for you to upload like 200 megabytes, you need more data to do that if you don't know how to compress your video. But when you do your screen recording, the size will not be that huge, will not be that um, that massive compared with when you now use your mobile phone to record. And for better optimization, the student will be able to see your screen clearly than having somebody help you record yourself right probably on a board or right somewhere. So, and instead of just using our WPS and just prepare a presentation or a and notes using WPS and just record that screen. We can just let it take our audio, create a presentation. Let's put more of pictures there. A picture says a thousand things. So with pictures today, we understand better. That, oh, this is um, the part of a plant that we're talking about. Oh, this is what it means by saying nucleus and by saying this. Oh, this is what it means by saying electromagnetic waves and wavelengths and what have you. We can try and add more pictures to our presentations to spice it up. More pictures to, to spice it up. Lastly, before I allow you to ask more questions, 
you can even as science teacher you can even have access to tens of thousands of simulations online by going to this site p h e t when you go to fets for example you go to fets.com i guess yes it should be fair if you go to fets.com you have access to a lot of simulations like this let's say i'm a chemistry or biology or physics or math teacher let's say about chemistry for example if i click on chemistry now it will show me all these simulations that i can add to my presentation that i can as well screen record and add to my presentation maybe i want to explain um acid and base solution now so i can use this simulation freely you know subscribing to use this you don't need to subscribe to use it it's free out there for anybody so fet is cool so you want to test the ph look at um the equation here and you want to change you want to put solvents you want the graph or you want to the molecule you want to change certain things you're moving from acid to base and you can use all these simulations as well and even take a picture of it, add it to our presentation, all to ensure that the students understand what we are trying to, to say. So it's not just for biology, you've got for biology, for physics, for chemistry, for mathematics, you have it there. Let's say for chemistry teacher now. For, okay, I just did out of chemistry. Let's say for physics teacher now. You want um, balancing acts, you want all the balance they are being and they want to calculate um, what they need to want to explain how to balance beam so you have all this available to you for free you want to explain to students why placing 15 kg here and you place 5 kg here and now let's see what we happen so so how do i balance things so i need to put 10 kg here to put 10 kg here. And you say, OK, because it's not the hedge. OK, so you can as well do all these things, do all these permutations and all these simulations, record it, add it to your slide. You can screen record while you're using your screen record here. It will still record all that you do on your system, whether you are making use of FET or you're making use of something else. It will still screen record it. So you can add all this together and blend everything up together so that your presentation will be top notch. So I actually want to encourage us that, yes, we've started something good, but we can as well just take it a step further. We can as well just continue to build on what we've been able to do so that we uh, our student how they'll be able to will be able to enjoy our presentations and let's keep recording the videos let's keep um impacting the life of our students we don't know somebody how they may not even be in nigeria if even be in other african countries or even in europe i would just see our video somewhere and just say wow somebody did this i need to work with this person to make this better so don't let's just see what we're doing and say yes we're just doing it for because i just want to do it we are actually making an impact and i really really want to appreciate our effort so far because it's not easy you're making use of your data you're making use of your phone your laptop and nobody's paying you for doing this but posterity will judge us all so i actually want to just stop here and take more questions and even after the meeting you can still ask more questions on whatsapp or on this platform so that i'll respond to your questions and we continue to exchange ideas on how to help ourselves how to be better at what we're doing like i said no man is an island of knowledge i also want to continue to learn from you people and i've been learning on whatsapp though i'm not a chat person but i'm always there even if i'm not posting anything there i'm always there i see all our posts and i take notes so let's if you have questions that you still want to ask let's drop our questions in the chat box or you can just unmute yourself 
and ask the questions. The recording will be shared with us time. on the WhatsApp. Okay, you can go, sir. Okay. So, my questions, I have two questions now. First one is that based on the screen record, okay. why the screen recording is going? Is it okay. possible for the camera to be able to capture you? you are in the slide? You can okay, you want a picture the picture the oh, network. Okay, I think I get that. You want your My image question. to be captured. Yes, you want your image to be captured while you are doing the screen recording, right? Is that what you're yeah. saying? Yeah. Okay, and the second that, question. The second question is that based on the Whoa. you are dealing with that balance That's, something. Can you take are that you again? I think you the part. Based on the site you just visited, where you can okay, do your yes, simulations, yes. when you are trying to balance the pivoted edge and the beam, so yes, are you the one trying to balance the thing, or it was the thing that is doing itself? I don't. I was the one. I was the one trying to balance it by placing different weights on it. I'm just saying you can do that while you are trying to explain to your student. So you can place 20 kg here, place 15 kg. I was actually the one trying to uh, move the bin, not by itself. So you control it, so I was the one controlling it. OK, no problem. Thank you. Yeah, so, so your first question, you said uh, the screen recording, will it capture your very self while you're recording? Yes and no. It depends on how you go about it. At the moment, if you just do what I'm doing now and just select the area and say this is what you're capturing, it will not capture yourself. It will only capture your screen. But let's say maybe you have your webcam on your system or you have a camera app on your system that you've invoked and it's probably appearing in a corner on your screen. It will capture it along with what you're doing. Microsoft recently retired an application that will have been perfect for that, and that is Office Mix. Office Mix. O F Mix. Though they've retired it, that doesn't mean that you still cannot download and use it on your system. Office Mix, unlike screen recording, will capture your own picture and at the same time record what you're doing on your screen. So you may try and explore that if you want that. And Camtasia too, that um, Mr. Ganil took us through, uh, I think sometimes last week. Yes, will also allow your picture or your video to be recorded together with your screen. So you can use Camtasia to, to do that too. Like I said, it's not about a um, lot of technology, it's about uh, making good use of a particular one that we lay our hands on. So regardless of the tool, if it is Camtasia that you feel okay with, fine. If you just want to make it of your PowerPoint, it's fine. Because I know Camtasia is not all free. And I know Nigerians, we find a way of cracking it. But if you don't know how to do that, that means you'll be left with using what you have, which is probably your PowerPoint and just uh, something else. Okay, do we have any other question? Because I, I think we've exceeded our time. So and I wouldn't want to keep us waiting. We can continue to drop questions on our WhatsApp page or uh, pop in every now and then to respond to the questions. Okay, hello. Hello, sir. Yeah. <laughs> hello. Uh, Can you hear me? Yes, yes, can hear you now. Uh -huh. So what is the major limitations of using these features on our mobile phones? Is wow. it better to use on laptop or on the mobile phone, the PowerPoint? It is better on your laptop because not all the features are available on the mobile app. But in case you do not have access to your laptop, it's fine, you can still make do with what you have on your mobile phone. But most of the apps out there, 
you will be able to do more with your PC version compared with the mobile version. So, you know, mobile has limitations, so you may not be able to do all the screen, all the other features out there, but you'll be able to do more on your, on your PC. Yes, you'll be able to do more on your PC. Um, somebody asked, can we get all these apps free on PC? Yes, PowerPoint, if you have your Microsoft Office installed, you have it on your system, yes? And even if you don't have it installed on your system, you can just go to your Outlook account, then you have access to all the apps like OneNote, Microsoft Word, PowerPoint, and all that. FET that I used is free. FET is free. In fact, you can download the entire FET on your system, although it's just about um, two point something gig. I mean, all the simulations that I shared with you, you can download all on your system. So even here, when you're not online, you're still making use of it. So you can do that offline. Okay. Any other question for Quaifa? Hello, sir. Hello. Sir. Hello, Mr. James. Hello. Yeah. Yeah, well done, sir. Yeah. Okay. Yes, sir. I want to also ask the Camtasia that you talk about. Can we get the online version as in on PC? The Camtasia. Yes, 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 Camtasia is not free. It's not free. Even if you oh. download it, you probably download the trial version. And like I said, um, I am not promoting uh, the use of online sales or know. pirated software. But I know Nigerians, I know people, they know how to find a way around that if you don't want to. But I know Camtasia is not free. I know Camtasia is not totally free out there. You still need to like pay a certain amount of, amount of money to get the license. But you can still explore the internet if you Hello. have it somewhere. Yes, sir. Okay. Thank you very much. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Wow, the network is, I think the network is not friendly. Oh, oh. I can, can you hear we me? We lost you. Yeah, I think it's better now. Okay. The issue is that I said kudos to Mr. Ganyu. He yeah. has shared the counter share with Oh, that's great then. On um, key and everything. So the, what we need oh. to do is to unzip what. Okay. Itself. That's all. Oh, so he has even shared the key and everything with you. That's that's cool. So we can just follow the step on zip, install, make use of the key, and we're fine. Camtasia is fine. You, you would capture your picture, capture everything and be able to record your screen, be able to pause and play and stop and do all that. So while using Camtasia too, we can as well ensure that we've prepared our presentation first so that when we're using Camtasia, it's recording everything. So we already have things that we want to show the student. So not just um, we have everything scattered here and there. We can uh, put our thoughts together and make sure our PowerPoint, our pictures, our videos, our simulations, and everything we want to show the student is in a place so that when we're using Camtasia, we won't just be moving from here to there. We'll be able to do it in, in, in a place. Uh, thank you again. Once, thanks once again to Mr. Ghani, since he has done that for us. So we can just take a look at that. So um, maybe we should have just one more question if we if there is any and probably Mr. Okwe if I can just okay yeah, hello hello yeah hello, sorry sir. I want to ask can we get the video of all the conversation that we have yes it's being recorded I will share it on WhatsApp okay okay thank you very it's much it's being recorded I will share it sir. Yeah. um uh, Mr Lincoln. yes my boy. Hello. Um, I think it was a wonderful time. We all, we all learned new things. Don't and you for those who are going off and on. I was still learning. 
hope my voice is clear. I, yes, yes, I can hear you. I can hear you. Thank you so much. I believe our participants still remain nine. We started with, at a point, we grew to about um, 14 or so. Uh, but it's not. Internet is. Internet is okay. Somebody just complained to me now. Money no longer. Just complain now that you couldn't continue again. And so many other people like that. I also struggle to remain in here too. So, just this. Thank you so much. Um. May I quickly also acknowledge, uh, I'll um, enjoy now or encourage some of our colleagues here, teachers here, who are yet to contribute to what we are doing. We will call it one teacher, one topic. We just enjoy you. Treat the topic, treat the lesson in your own subject area and drop a video for us in our um, central YouTube channel or just drop it straight on the WhatsApp group and together we all go and then help our children at home. I really want to thank my friend Adeko for what he has done today. Your brother, he sorry. He brought the idea that we should come together like this and do this, and then we are moving forward now gradually. And to Mr. Ganil in the house, if he's still there, thank you. He's still, what there. You have been still around, okay. Thank you so much. And then uh, somebody, also, Awuni, yeah, Mr. Awuni also. Is there Awuni or Awuni? Yeah. Both of them are not on. Okay, Mr. Sam also had dropped a lesson for us too. So all these yes, tools, yes. please don't let us take them and learn and go. It's, let's um, use them and then please for the house, for the platform, I can also bring this in. Kindly just drop a topic using one of the tools. I don't know whether that that role, that role, that role, that role, whether she's still in the house. That role. Okay, she's no longer here. She also had done several lessons too, using PowerPoint in her own way. She started by our small, uh, what was it called, X recorder. And today now, she's using PowerPoint. I believe very soon, we'll be up there to training others. So Mr. Lekon, once again, I say thank you. I've learned more than one thing. I'm, I've learned so many things, even though I was going in and coming out. And you soon see me teaching in that same order. And for everyone, thank you for joining us too. Thank you. Thank so you. like I said, I, I'll, I will share.